I'll let you behold from um, around this time of year in 1969. All that you behold, though it appears without, it is within, of which this world of mortality is but a shadow. And which is, of course, the, the Blake quote that Neville so was in love with. If you will but enter a state in your imagination and assume its truth, the outer world will respond to your assumption, for it is your shadow, forever bearing witness to your inner imaginal activity. And this is a fantastic summary of all the teachings. If you could just understand this one paragraph, you really don't need to read another Neville lecture. That's enough. That's everything you need to know about the law right there. Test yourself, and if you prove this to your own satisfaction, you will come to the same conclusion the Apostles did in the 13th chapter of the book of Acts. Then you too will say, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my heart who will do all my will. If the world responds to your imaginal activity, is the world not David doing your will? If the Lord claimed that David always does his will and you, by a simple imaginal act, command the outer world to respond, are you not the Lord? When you imagine something, it is as though you struck a chord, and everything in sympathy with that chord uh, responds to bear witness to the activity in you. If this world is a responding chord to what you are imagining, and David is a man after your own heart who will do all your will, is David not the outer world? This is not will as the word uses, as the world uses the word. You do not will something to be so, but imagine it, and become inwardly convinced that it is so. And if, through your persistence, the world responds, you have not only found David, you have found the Lord as your own wonderful human imagination. So there is a common phrase that, I don't know why it got memefied, but it got recently memefied in manifesting communities, and it's Florence Scroville Shin. As far as I know, it's the whole birds before land, and that is simply a phenomenon when when you're imagining for something, similar things start happening, or the thing you want happens to somebody else, and that phenomenon is called birds before land. Um, the reason why that happens is because when you're imagining, you're using the might of God. So, of course, there are going to be other things that are not what you've specifically imagined come up because you've taken the only power and put it on this particular uh, idea. So it must be represented in your world in as many facets as it possibly can. An example of birds before land that people often refer to uh, or often talking about and noting as an experience is when they're imagining for a relationship um, people who uh, you know former partners they haven't talked to in years even though it's not the specific partner they want to be with will start contacting them uh, other people uh, who they um, might consider as partners will start showing interest in them who had prior not shown interest uh, you know random strangers will start hitting on them when prior that was very unusual for them uh, so that is, or a friend of theirs, if they've been imagining for marriage or a committed relationship, a friend of theirs uh, who had maybe not even been dating at all will suddenly get married uh, or they'll, or you'll see things um, in media and on the internet that represent, uh, that are very close to what you've imagined. You may even see exact objects uh, represented um, in your exterior world, but not necessarily your manifestation itself. And that happens because you are God. <laughs> it's simple. Um, that's why that happens. And that's what it means. So for anyone who wants to know what this birds before land means, it means you are God the Father. Uh, in Hebrew thought, history consists of all the generations of men and their experiences fused into one grand whole. This concentrated time into which all the generations are fused and from which they spring is called eternity. In Ecclesiastes, we are told that God put eternity into the mind of man, but so that man cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. Only in the end will you really know what God has put into your mind. All the generations of men and their experiences, in other words, your imagination, you have access to all of it right now. 